This is problem nine of the 2022 M maths individual round. And the problem reads, suppose sequence a sub i is equal to a sub one comma a sub two comma a sub three. And it satisfies a sub n plus one is equal to one over a sub n plus one for all positive integers n. And we define another sequence b sub k for positive integers k greater than or equal to two to be the minimum real number such that the product a1 times a2 times dot 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 times a k does not exceed b k for any positive integer choice of a1. Find one over b2 plus one over b3 plus one over b4 plus dot 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 plus one over b10. All right, so let's 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 take a look at this. And there's a lot of very dense notation in this problem, but let's sort of try to break the, break it up into something easier. Let's ignore the the sequence of b's for now and just just look at a ai and see how it behaves. And we don't know what a one is, but we all we know is a one is a positive integer. It could be any positive integer. It could be one. It could be two. It could be seventy nine. So let let's let's try to experiment with a one and and in terms of a one find the sequence of ai. So for example, why don't we let a one be equal to one and see what happens? So the sequence of ais would look something like this: one, then a two is one over one plus one, one half. A a three is one over half plus one, which you can find is two thirds. And then a4, if you go one over two thirds plus one, you get three over five. And then if you keep writing down a few more terms, you get five eighths, eight thirteenths, and so on and so forth. Dot, dot, dot. And okay, we, we can look at this, these fractions. We can say, okay, some sort of Fibonacci thing because one one two three five eight thirteen etc is the Fibonacci sequence. Um, that that's that's not really important. What's important is that we do have a pattern. Um, it does appear that if you have a fraction m over n, this turns into and and you apply this to the a a sub n plus one, you get n over m plus n. And in general, no matter what m over n is, this will be true because this will turn into 1 over m over n plus 1, which is equal to n over m plus n. <laughs> All right. Um, with that in mind, why don't we try something else? Let's try a sub 1 is equal to 2. Okay. In this case, our first term is 2. Our second term is 1 thirds. Then using this sort of pattern, we can get our third term equal to, well, numerator becomes the denominator. The denominator becomes the sum of three and one, three fourths, four sevenths, seven elevenths, 11 eighteenths, et cetera, et cetera. If a sub one is equal to three, you get something like three, one quarter, four over five, five over nine, nine over 14, 14 over 23, dot, dot, dot. And that's sort of, you can kind of see the pattern that would follow from choosing a sub one as anything. We follow this pattern, m over n goes to n over m plus n. All right, now let's take a look at the b's, okay? bk is defined to be the minimum real number such that the product a1 times a2 times dot 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 times a k does not exceed bk for any positive integer choice of a sub one. And, to experiment, why don't we try to find b2, for example? So b sub 2 is equal to, well, we look at the product a1 times a2, and in each of these sequences, and you see, well, the products are 1 times a half, 2 times a third, 3 times a quarter. And for any given a1, you get a1 over a1 plus 1. And B2 has to be the smallest number that's bigger than all of these guys. In this case, that you, you see that the answer is just one because A1 can never be bigger than A1 plus one. But if you make A1 extremely big, this fraction will get extremely close to one from the lower side. So B2 is equal to one. But how does that help us? Let's try to find B3 because it seems like it could be a little harder. Well, let, let's see. So b3 is equal to 
for for this first sequence, you get one times a half times two thirds, or alternatively, one third. For the second sequence, you get two times a third times three fourths. Uh, conveniently, well, I'll write it as two over four because the threes cancel out. Um, the third term is three one fourths times four fifths. That's three fifths. And once again, very conveniently, you end up with this specified form. Um, a sub one over a sub one plus two. And how did that happen? Well, the reason is because, well, you, you, so, you sort of see you get, you have like a one over one as your fraction, then you get one over a one plus one. And then the ne very next term becomes a one plus one over a one plus two by taking your denominator up here and making your new denominator the sum of the numerator and the denominator. And these guys cancel out and the ones cancel out. So you're left with a one over a a one plus two. And once again, a one over a one plus two goes to one is a one gets very big, but will never actually equal one. Now let's try B four. Um, and we can see that, well, if you have, well, B4 is going to be the product of the first four terms of the sequence of A's. So for any general A1, once again, your fourth term is going to be the, the denominator as your new numerator, A1 plus 2 over 2A1 plus 3, the sum of the numerator and the denominator. And when you multiply all of these fractions out together, you are going to get A1 over 2A1 plus 3 because everything else is going to cancel. And this will subtend to one half from the negative side, from, from the lower side, um, because this will always be less than a half because the denominator is more than twice the numerator. But as a1 gets very, very big, this three is going to essentially become insignificant uh, because it's not going to be growing as a1 grows. So this fraction will approach one half. So b4 is going to be one half. And if we do the same for b5, well, let, 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 let's take a look. B5, it's the product of the first five terms, but the fifth term is going to be 2A1 plus 3 over 3A1 plus 5. Because you, you get that from the fourth term. And when you take the product out of all of these, surprise, surprise, everything cancels out except A1 over the last denominator, 3A1 plus 5. Which goes to one third for, the, for similar reasons, because... It will always be less than one third due to the denominator being more than three times of the numerator, but it will go to one third as A1 gets bigger and bigger and bigger. So it will get very close to one third, but not quite one third. So B5 is equal to one third. And similarly, if you were to try to calculate B6, you'd get another fraction, which I'm not going to do, but rest assured, the only thing that matters is the last denominator as everything else will cancel. And the last denominator turns out to be 5a1 plus 8, meaning a1 over 5a1 plus 8. And you can actually sort of look at these limits by just looking at the a1 terms. And the reason we can do that is because we could we could rewrite this fraction in a very clever way. As 1 over 5 plus 8 over a1, we divided both the numerator and the denominator by a1. And as a1 gets bigger and bigger and bigger, this denominator is going to get smaller and smaller and smaller until the fraction is very, very close to one fifth. So B, B6 is one fifth. And if you were to calculate B7, it would be one eighth. And the reason is because your new, your new denominator, if your new, if your new, your new denominator would be um, like 8A1 plus 13 or something or the other, because the numerator of the previous fraction was three and the denominator was five. So B7 is 1 eighth, and we we see that we do look at into a Fibonacci type sequence. Um, and you and you can sort of convince yourself, if I haven't already convinced you, that B8 is equal to 1 13th, followed by 1 21 and 1 over 34. All right. Now, finally, we can find the sum of these nine terms. One, the reciprocals of these nine terms, I should say, because the reciprocal of B2 is one, the reciprocal of B3 is one, the reciprocal of B4 is one, the reciprocal of B5 is three, then five, eight, 13, 21, 34.
And you can calculate the sum on your own, but this sum will go to 88. And that is our final answer. So we are done. Thanks for watching and I will see you next time.